Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first edition of Cigar Advisors, brought to you by the Cigar Guys. My name is Alex. I'm here with Jared. I'm Jared. Hey, Jared. I'm Alex. We're going to talk about some different topics for cigars that are geared more towards beginners. Jared and I are going to talk about kind of like our first experience. Our first time. For <laughs> our first time and, um, you know, losing our cigar virginity. And we're going to walk you guys through some of our uh, stories and what we did and share some advice for people that want to get into cigar smoking. So I'll share my story. I think I started smoking cigars first. Yeah, absolutely. So if you couldn't tell, the first 82 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely check out the Cigar Guys podcast for longer form content. But essentially, I turned 18 and was recommended that since I'm now 18, I should go smoke cigars. So I found the nearest cigar lounge, which is like literally down the road. Went in and got a Padron 1926 Maduro because that's what I was told was really good. And if you know anything about Padrones is they're definitely on the stronger side. Luckily, I was smart enough to get a small one. Uh, and the cigar was pretty strong, but since it was smaller, I was able to smoke the whole thing and uh, didn't have any issues. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend going to have a strong cigar right off the bat. And we'll get more into that a little bit. But Jared, how did you get into cigar smoking? I think it was like four or five years ago, I had my first cigar. And then I took a four or five year hi hiatus. Um, I'm just kidding, okay. Oh, stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense. Now, it was like years ago that I had a friend, a high school buddy, that uh, brought me to a lounge that's local to Florida called Corona. And I had a Monte Cristo Classic Yellow Series, which was my first one I ever had. That's a little on the lighter side. I'm sure it's only about $10, probably still about $10 today. I had the, uh, I think the New York stick. It has a little bit more pepper, a little bit more spice to it. Uh, definitely not an everyday smoke for me. I, I, bought, I did buy a box, my first box I've ever bought ever of any cigars ever. Um, I might buy another one actually, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, it's been a while, but that was the first time I ever did that. Um, but I really come a long way, like how I cut the cigars, how I inhale, still working on the retro hail. Um, my palate's still forming. I, I think my palate's way more advanced when it comes to like wines and whiskeys, you know, things like that, you know, uh, higher level like liqueur, so to speak. But uh, my palate's still forming as we go along. And then, um, I don't know, what would you say? Like uh, one day you saw me. I saw him from across the room. Having a major addiction to uh, this great brand called Padron. And I was smoking a Padron 1926, probably like almost five times a day. You know, they were calling me, Jared, you're not showing up to work. You don't go to the gym anymore. You're skipping meals. You know, you're losing weight. Then you're gaining weight. I hate that one. Uh, and then, uh, you know, then he makes you smoke 10 scars a day. It's crazy how that works. I don't know. I don't think I ever went through that phase. But basically, yeah, Mark, I think, was actually the first person that you got introduced to. Uh, this was like the foundation of the Cigar Guys podcast. The Cigar Guys already existed, but Jared was like the final piece of the puzzle. But essentially, uh, we're going to get more into what we would recommend you guys to do if it's your first time or maybe, you know, your second or third time going in. You don't really know what to do. Uh, we're going to help walk you through that so that way it's less awkward, less, you know, scary. Um, but essentially, I would recommend you rely heavily on the employees there, the tobacconists that work there. Uh, don't be afraid to let them know that it's your first time or you're just getting into cigars and say, hey, I'm looking for something that's on the lighter side uh, with good flavor to help guide you in the right direction. Uh, some, cigar, some cigars that I would recommend would be like the My Father Connecticut. It's cheaper. It's like a, in the $8 range. It's a lighter cigar, but still has really good flavor. Um, I would also recommend something like a Perdomo 10-year anniversary uh, called the Champagne. Uh, you'll recognize it because the cellophane is basically an orange color uh, and most cigar lounges will have the this particular cigar the Padron Champagne so go in there and ask for one of these two or see what the tobacconist recommends you um, what cigars on the lighter side would you recommend that's a tricky one for me Alex because I don't smoke light cigars because light cigars are for pussies well, well, oh, oh no they're not they're, oh, cut that out okay anyway <laughs> yeah, we'll cut that out anyways let's continue um, 
moving on. Uh, I really don't smoke lighter cigars. It's hard to really pick those out. I'd say any kind of Connecticut you find, I think, is a generally lighter cigar. But just because it's lighter in color doesn't mean it's bold or less bold in flavor. Something to really, something, it would be a lesson to learn for you if you, if, when you're new to smoking. You gotta like kind of slow it down a little bit. And that's a good point though. Just because it's got a lighter wrapper on it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna not be strong or it's gonna be, you know, super light. Um, so definitely double check with the tobacconist um, or pick some of the recommendations that we said. There's plenty of um, Connecticut cigars, which are the lighter color ones that are going to be generally on the lighter side. So it's generally a safe bet. Um, but yeah, I would just say rely on the tobacconist for sure. You can message us as well. Ask for recommendations. Uh, we're usually responding to comments or messages as best we can. Uh, so you can always ask us. And I would say, you know, go to a place that has a lounge that you can sit at or a bar and try to meet some people. People at the cigar lounge are generally really cool people, I would say. Um, very personable, willing to talk to you, share their recommendations as well. Uh, but it's a good place to you know, sit down and sort of experience the cigar for the first time. Uh, people are not going to be rude to newbies most of the time. Um, and I would say to have the tobacconist or someone there show you how to cut and light the cigar. A lot of places they'll do it for you anyway. Um, so you could buy a cigar and then they'll take care of you. Uh, but have them show you how to do it so that way you can, you know, get a cutter and a lighter. And it doesn't have to be anything expensive either. You know, you don't have to drop like a grand on a lighter like uh, someone at this table does. But you could start with a $10 lighter, a torch lighter, and a cheap cutter, and you can go at it. They'll teach you how to cut it and light it, and we'll go uh, over that a little bit as well. Uh, what's that? I found this. I use this as a paperweight. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm going to try it out. Oh. This would be the $1,000 lighter I was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> DuPont's great. It's funny. It took me about two years of searching this down because I wanted to buy it from a, ideally a local shop. But we ended up buying it in uh, Michigan, actually, which is actually kind of funny. Um, Still supporting a shop. Yes. And they're great people. Uh, they become good friends of ours. Uh, definitely check out Churchill Cigar Bar Bistro. Several locations in Michigan. If you're in Michigan, also check out Shelby Township. I thought Looks I'd like, fill this up. Could be a little windy, but... Yeah. Uh, Don Christo's Cigar Room or... Uh, Churchill Church Cigar Bar, both in Michigan, <laughs> the greater Detroit area. Great places if you're over there. We're in Orlando, Florida, so we've got uh, quite a big selection over here. Corona has a bunch of locations, Cigars on the Ave, Cigar Hustler, uh, Sully City Cigars, a bunch of great places in this area. But look up your local cigar lounge. Try and find one that is, an act is actually a lounge and not just a shop. And uh, we're going to get into now kind of cutting the cigar, lighting the cigar, what you'll need to know about that. I was saying, uh, I forgot to say this earlier, but the biggest issue or biggest thing that stumped me was just because you see a higher uh, purchase price on a, on a cigar doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. I experienced this a few times because I personally find Davidoff to be a little bit too light for me. But when you're purchasing a stick that's, you know, a Toro and it's like $45, you know, it's probably a one-time thing. I haven't purchased uh, Davidoff for quite some time. I'm not saying they're bad, but I'm just saying they're, they're really light for my palate. So you really got to kind of figure out what you like for your own taste, your own palate. And you'll kind of find that over time as you mature. But the, the thing is, you kind of want to start small and kind of grow. Because just because it's more expensive doesn't mean it tastes always better for you. That is a good point. Uh, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money on a cigar for it to be good. There's great cigars that are under $10 that you can enjoy. Like the ones I recommended earlier, those are all either 10 or less. So... Don't fall into the trap of you have to spend a lot of money to enjoy a good cigar. You definitely can find really good cigars for more money. And I definitely recommend you do try some of these cigars at some point. But don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money to enjoy good cigars. When it comes to cutting your cigar, generally we use a straight cut. We have cigar scissors. We also have like the guillotine cuts like this. It's one or two blades that allow a straight cut on the very end of your cigar right here. You always want to cut 
just above the cap so that way your cigar doesn't end up unraveling. Nice clean cut right across and then when you light your cigar, preferably uh, we recommend torch lighters that use butane um, so there's no added chemical flavor or anything like that. It's, very, it's a very pure form of flame. So we'll pretend like this cigar was not lit already. But when you have the end here, you take your torch and you don't want to put the torch too close to your cigar. You want to use the very tip, the heat of the flame to really toast your cigar. You get the end nice and red hot and then take a puff, maybe light the end as well. Kind of like that. And the key is to get a nice even burn on the foot of your cigar. So that way it will burn evenly all the way through, or at least increase your chances of not having a bad burn. And again, your tobacconist will show you this and you can start practicing with uh, cheaper cigars just in case. Um, the cut is really the most important part. You don't want to cut too low because like I said, your cigar might unravel and then it's going to be really hard to smoke if the whole thing is just falling apart. Uh, you can also get a V cut and this is going to be easier to cut your cigar because it's going to prevent you from going too low on the cigar. They usually have a stopping point so you could put the cigar in there, squeeze it, and it'll give you a little V cut. Um, that's a great way to prevent your cigar from unraveling and having a bad cut. You also have a punch cut, which is a sharp circular blade where you can create a hole at the end of the cigar. Uh, if you have a nice sharp punch cut, this will also eliminate you having any cracks and potentially unraveling on the cigar. And those are basically some tips on how to actually cut and light your cigar. And then when you get to smoking it, try not to smoke too fast because the cigar will heat up and taste bitter. Your burn will be weird. Just kind of take it slow. Like you get the rhythm of every, you know, 45 seconds to a minute, you know, plenty of time. Um, casually try and be consistent with it, not go too fast or, you know, too slow. If you leave your cigar sitting there for a few minutes, it might go out and you have to relight it. And you want to prevent relighting all the time because that might add some harsh flavors to it as well. So it's best to keep a long ash on it as long as you can to help keep the, the combustion, help keep the burn. Uh, and that way you can have a nice even smoke all the way through. I find the best cigars are ones that you have to light one time and then the cigar will continue to be lit virtually the entire time. Yeah. Relighting one time over an hour is not bad at all. I think the light of the ash, you'll notice the better quality of the tobacco you're actually smoking. Um, and uh, remind me to fire that intern who didn't fill this up. Yeah, that's ridiculous. We go through interns like every week. <sighs> but it's okay. Um, what were you just saying? Sorry, I'm a little upset right now. Me too. I totally lost my train of thought. I, I did too. Oh, yeah. It's, so, at the end of the day, cigars are a handmade product. They're all rolled by hand. So, there's always going to be a few inconsistencies. So, again, like Jared said, it is common to have to relight a cigar once. That might happen. Cigar might go out. You might kind of forget about it. So, it's not uncommon for that to happen. Uh, it might burn a little uneven. That happens. Um, if you lit the cigar properly and it burns uneven, it might just be that the cigar wasn't um, rolled as good as it should be. There might be uh, a little underfilling of the filler leaves in there. Unfortunately, it happens. It shouldn't happen a lot. We say like if you have a box of 20 cigars, if one of those is bad, that's really good. If you have you know five of them that are bad, that's really not so good. But for the most part, Premium cigars that you're going to be smoking will be consistent for the most part. Back to Padron. Padron is probably the most consistent brand out there. Always a great draw. Always a great burn. And they all taste the same. So you'll find your cigars that you like that are your consistence, your go-tos, your everyday cigars. Uh, and those will treat you pretty well. Yeah, it was funny. The other day, I bought a $15 stick, which is kind of medium range, I guess, price. And it was a really good stick. I don't want to say the brand because it's one of my new favorites. It had plume on it. 
Yeah. Since, since I'm colorblind, I almost smoked the mold at the end of the foot. I almost died. Twice. Because I had to get another one to replace it, and that had plume on it, too. Unfortunately, mold can be an issue with cigars. It's what happens when there's too much humidity in the place that you're storing your cigars. Uh, it can happen at a shop. It's unfortunate when it does. But if your cigar gets too humid, mold can develop. And that's not a good thing. Um, so you definitely want to keep your cigars. We recommend around like 69% humidity. It's not a joke. That's actually a great place to keep it. 65 to 69 is definitely a good spot for humidity. Um, we have a podcast episode that goes more in depth about storing your cigars and aging your cigars for a long period of time. So definitely go check that out. But it is unfortunate when that happens. And uh, it, it comes down to storage. How do you store the cigars or how the shop is storing the cigars? Most shops will have a pretty good idea of you know, running their humidor and regulating the temperature and the humidity. So you shouldn't run into that issue if you're going to buy a cigar. When it comes to storing your own cigars at home in a cedar humidor or a cool humidor, um, you just got to be careful with the humidity. We recommend using Bovida packs because these humidification packs are designed to keep the humidor at a specific humidity. So if you have a 69% humidification pack, it will either add humidity if needed or it will draw humidity into the pack and that way it will stay consistent and those can last you two months, four months, depending on the size and how big your humidor is. I have the, the big one they sell from Bovida and actually my electric humidor. Yeah. And I keep it in my room at night to measure the humidity too. Yeah, so you don't, down. you don't have to worry about getting too big of a humidity pack too. If you have a small humidor with a big humidity pack, it'll just last longer. All right, thank you for joining the first lesson from the Cigar Advisors. Alex and Jared are here bringing you top tier cigar tips how to enjoy your first cigar, more specifically if you're a beginner. Uh, if you like this video, if you enjoy the content, go ahead and give us a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell as well so you can stay updated when we upload more content like this or new cigar podcasts. We upload podcasts every week, and you can check the description as well for our social media. We have a bunch of short content for you to enjoy. So until next time, take care. Thank you.